Good afternoon, everyone. Happy August. Happy Tuesday. So happy to see all of you today. Welcome you joining today's class, How to Make Money by Creating ADUs. I'm Pauline Lam from Kotai Realty, your 2021 co-chair education committee, West and Gabriel Valley Realtors. A friendly reminder, all participants will be muted during the meeting. And should you have any questions, please enter it into the chat box. Speaker will answer your question during the Q&A section. This section is being recorded and will be available on the YouTube channel, West St. Gabriel Valley Realtors. Now, I'm so glad to have Mr. Wei Ming Li, our Education Committee Co-Vice Chair, Commercial Section, to introduce you today's very special from Southern California, Ms. Christy Sertwell. And Mr. Lee, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pauline. Uh, today, we have the pleasure of having Christy to come and talk to us on ADU. In the past, I have given a seminar on something similar, but my concentration is more in construction. But now today, Christy will help you and your client understand the value of what an ADU is. It actually helps you to create cash flow in your real estate portfolio. ADU, in my perspective, is creating affordable housing. But Christy took it one step further. She can teach you how to make money. And she has bought over 250 houses in California. I don't know how she find the time to do that. You know? And she, she looks very young. So she probably started out very, very young as a teenager. And her specialty is buying hoarder houses. I, it, it probably, she can come and buy mine because I'm a hoarder myself. Chrissy's current project, including fixing and flipping properties. And she has turned one of her ADU into a music studio. And now she continues to buy more ADU, creating additional cash flow. Christine, uh, Christine now lives in Los Angeles and she enjoys outdoor activities. Uh, she played guitar, I did not know she played guitar. Good food and wine. We can have lunch now, Christy. Okay, now the floor is yours. Audience, enjoy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me and uh, I've just made so many mistakes over the years. I hope you learn from all my mistakes and maybe get some ideas to that of things I actually did right and how I've created some additional cash flow by building ADUs. So that's all the things I, I hope to share with you today. So let's do the screen share just like we practiced. <laughs> This one. Okay, can you see my uh, presentation? Yes. You can see it, okay. I will. Open this and put this into slideshow mode. Okay, you can still see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, great. So ADUs, that's our topic for today. <clears throat> and so I'm just gonna give you a bit about, about my background. Um, I think we have a lot of realtors on, on this call today and maybe a few other real estate professionals as well. So I'm hoping to just give you some ideas that um, you can use for yourself or even for your clients. Give them ideas of what they can do to add additional um, cash flow to their properties. And I'll go over a lot of the basic rules. I have a lot of slides just with some a lot of detail. And then what I really want to focus on is three deal profiles. So three specific ADUs that I've built and walk you through it sort of start to finish and just to give you some ideas. And then I'll stay as long as we need at the end for Q and A. Um, so just, you know, you can, I guess, type your questions in the chat box if you want or wait to the end, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get through all the questions. So this is just a, a collage of me and um, the things that matter to me. And I really think this is important for everyone and especially the real estate industry to do because we know 
this industry is crazy some days. So know what your why is. Why are you making this money? We, life is short and we need to have some fun in between our business. So <clears throat> my parents, my sisters at the top, top right there with their boys. Um, that's my guitar, the bottom left. I do play guitar and uh, some other instruments. Music is really important to me, helped me get through last year for sure. Um, I drive a 1979 Volkswagen bus. So I guess I have a little bit of hippie in me. Um, and uh, just, I try to enjoy life in between working hard. I think that's really important. So professionally, um, I actually moved from Canada. Uh, gosh, it seems forever ago now, 2008. And my intent was to start a real estate business here, um, mostly winging it at the beginning because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but somehow I, I learned the business and um, I've bought 250 houses since then. And I've been busy flipping most of those, but really the whole reason why I wanted to even start thinking about ADUs is because when you are just flipping houses, you just have a job. When you're a realtor, right, you just make a commission. You're exchanging time for money. We have to set something up for ourselves so that we have passive income coming in because one day we're going to be 90 and we don't want to be still flipping houses or trying to you know list property for sale so be thinking about that how you can set up um, passive income for yourself so i started thinking well how can i keep property as rentals in southern california you know without putting 50 percent down or all cash you know i i wanted to be able to hold property and when you build the adus then you, you already own the land, what it cost to build the ADU made sense to keep it as a rental property. So I'll go into that. My specialty, somehow I just fell into the, the hoarding specialty. So if you've seen that TV show Hoarders, you know what those houses look like. That's what I specialize in buying. So as far as ADUs go, I, I've built six of my own so far. I have three more um, under the in the design phase and submitted to the city. So hopefully I'll have three more built. And then I've been just helping my friends build some as well and do some little consulting here and there. So, and I've done lots of, you know, um, additions and I'm actually doing a lot split right now. So I'll show you that a bit in a bit later. And here's a picture on the right. Well, both pictures are some of my team members um, at, at a couple of my properties. So just to give you an example of the type of houses I buy, I call this my, my mullet house, okay? Business in the front, party in the back. Uh, I drove up to this one and, you know, it looks great from the street, but you go around the back and it was a complete disaster. You know, the house had caught fire. So fire damaged properties, I, I will definitely buy. And then of course, the ones that are completely hoarded. And this is actually, you know, when it gets to this level, and it's, it's waste high garbage in the house. Um, it, it's a mental illness. So I just, I realized I had a knack, a knack for talking to these homeowners <clears throat> and just being compassionate and non-judgmental. They're still people, they know they, they're in a bit of a situation, but this is what I just sort of fell into doing because I knew I could help them. Um, and sometimes, you know, they're going into an assisted living home or something like that. They need the money from the sale of this property and they have no way and no capacity to fix it up themselves. So this is, this is three pictures of sort of the same angle, the before, the before, and then the before and the after. Um, so you can see the transformation there. So bathroom, the same I mean, this is a pretty severe case, but this is probably out of all the houses I buy, about 80% look like this. So this room, I didn't even know what it was, you know, um, sometimes I can't even get into a room. Um, and this one, I, I couldn't, I'm like, okay, surprise room, we'll see what it is when I get it cleaned out. And now you can see uh, the remodel. So, so Again, I wanted to think about how could I start keeping some of these houses as rental property? 
they it didn't make any sense to keep them because you can't get enough rent to pay for the mortgage and the taxes and the insurance, even though mortgage rates are great and, and still a low interest rate these days. So that's why when I found out about ADUs, now the rule came out in 2017, I believe. I didn't find out about it until 2018. And I thought, how can this be? They've made a rule where you can now put two houses on an R1 zoned lot. I couldn't believe it. I thought you, you, you can now have a duplex on an R1 zone lot. That's what this is. And so I thought, well, this is pretty neat. I'm gonna look into this. Well, this is brand new. The cities in 2018 didn't even know what they were doing back then. They were just starting to try to put together their own rules about, you know, the state had a rule about it, but each city would have specific rules as to what they wanted. So I just started researching. Well, you can build an ADU as a completely detached structure. Um, you could also attach it to, you know, the existing house or attach to a garage. Um, you can also do a modular, there's modular ADUs out there now. I, I'm not gonna go into that too much, but just know that that exists as well. Um, I just chose to do all of mine stick built. Um, and it's just a cost-effective way to increase your living space. So you already own the land. That's the most expensive thing to own in California. Why not utilize it if you have the space to build and, and house additional people? So, and, and this is what they are. I mean, they used to be called granny suites. So you move your grandma in, you know, and you make it all one story and actually it's kind of smart because if you make it all one story, you can actually customize it for maybe a wheelchair or um, a walker. You make the hallways a little wider. Um, so that's a possibility or extent some sort of extended family. Personally, I just wanted to have them as rental, additional rental units and rent them out for additional income. So I threw in a couple of websites on this slide here if you want to make note of them adu.lacity.org <clears throat> is a government subsidy subsidy program for um, people who need help with their housing payments so they're a low income earner and they need some help so not quite like section 8 but maybe similar so that's a great program that exists in city of la look into that because it's almost like a guaranteed paycheck every month. Um, the second website is SB9. It's not passed yet, but keep an eye on this for any of your investor clients. This is a law where you may be able to split your lot and not have a minimum lot requirement. So I'm actually splitting a lot in the city of LA right now in Highland Park. The lot is 13,000 square feet and I'm splitting it into two. So the, so the rule right now is a lot has to be minimum 5,000 square feet. Okay, so that, that works for this particular project I have. But they're talking about um, you might be able to split lots that are smaller in size. So it just it would allow for more housing. So just keep an eye on that to see if that passes because for your investor clients or for yourself, it could be a way to add additional housing. So as of last year, um, the owner occupancy requirement went away. So when I was building my ADUs, it was 2018 and 19 is when I built. Well, I didn't know this, but I was supposed to be living in either the main house or the ADU. <laughs> so. Anyway, I kind of got around that, but now there's not that owner occupant requirement. So if you already have a rental property and you want to put an ADU on it, that's okay. You can have two renters on that property. They can be rented to the same family or they can be rented to two different tenants. So, and there's no minimum lot required now. So back in a couple of years ago when I was doing mine, each city said, okay, well, we want the lot to be 6,800 square feet 
minimum in order for you to build an ADU. So there were certain rules I had to meet back then. Now, most cities have done away with that. Um, the size of the ADU, and um, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe you can build them up to 1,200 square feet. That's a big house. When you think about that, I mean, some people's houses are three bed, one bath, 1,200 square feet. Well, now you can have an ADU that size. It may not be appropriate to put that big of, a, of an ADU. You want to make it appropriate. We'll talk about that also in a minute. Um, I haven't done one that big, but I've done studios all the way up to two bedrooms around 750 square feet. So the city also decided they wanted to speed up their, their uh, approval time frame. Okay, well then COVID hit and just everybody still uses that as an excuse and everything's quite slow still. So I would say just expect and correct me if I'm wrong, I know there's um, contractors on the call as well, but it's about three to four months to, to get plans approved, which is still okay. It's still okay, because then you spend another, you know, six or eight months building it out. Worst case, worst case from start to finish, you can finish one of these within a year, I would say. Faster if you're working with the right people. But just don't don't get your hopes up. They're just uh, backlogged in in a lot of cities. So um, another good thing actually is the city fees are lower. Um, I used to, I don't know. The, well, we'll get into the fees in a minute. But this, the fees have lowered, so that's good news. And any realtor who's working with commercial clients, here's a cool one for you. Um, you can convert those carports. So you know the apartments that are two-story, you walk up the stairs and the apartments are on the top and then you've got the parking underneath. Usually there's maybe four parking spots underneath. You could convert two of those potentially into two studio-sized or one bedroom ADUs. So that's allowed on commercial property. So look into that if you have clients who own, you know, four plexes, six plexes, 12 plexes, that sort of thing. There's an opportunity there. And an opportunity to market specifically for those properties as well. In city of LA, they um, had a requirement to retrofit a lot of those old commercial buildings, right, for earthquake. So if you're gonna spend the money to put in supports and beams and this and that, you might as well just think about spending a little bit extra and turn them into ADUs. And now you've got actually income coming off of those. So that there's an opportunity there for sure. So here's a list of cities I've built. Um, I like to, to keep my rental properties around the Long Beach area. So that's why you tend to see sort of South uh, LA County, North Orange County for my, my portfolio. Um, but I will keep a couple in LA as well. Um, in addition to this list, I've helped my friends in Anaheim, Irvine, um, Whittier, Glendale. So I know a lot of the different cities. Um, the best thing you can do if you want to start checking the ADU rules is to just go online. A lot of them actually have a section for their ADU rules online, or you can email um, the, the building department or the planning department and they'll respond back with their, their updated ADU rules. So sizes, I've built studios. So think of a two car garage is about 20 by 20 or 18 by 20. To me, that's about a studio size. Now I know some people who would fit a one bedroom in that. To me, that's a little tight. I haven't chosen to do that. I'd rather have the open space because by the time you frame it in, and sometimes they want two by sixes now for the framing, um, it's just a smaller space. I'd rather have it open. Although if you do a one bedroom, maybe you get a little bit more in rent. So that's something to consider. Um, I've also done the, the one bedrooms that make sense are around 500 square feet at, at minimum to me. Um, and then the two bedrooms have been about 750 square feet. But again, you can go all the way up to three bed, two bath. In fact, um, I've seen a modular home that they've craned in. Like to me, like 
at all the construction I've done, I couldn't imagine craning this in, but this, this can be done if you if you want it already built and you just want it plopped on your property and they're nice they're nice three bed two bath um it's it's a separate living quarter it's amazing it's amazing to me still even though this rule's been around for a while that you can have two two homes on on an r1 single family resident zone property anyway so soft costs um, on average, I spent about 20,000. So soft costs or anything before you get to the shovel in the ground. So you start from the design, the architect, submitting the plans to the city, right? There's a plan check fee. Um, the different fees that the city requires all the way up to permit, paying for permits. Those are all your soft costs, the costs you have to pay before you even stick the shovel in the ground. 20,000 on average, it's probably a little less now. Um, construction, I'm gonna say this is probably a little bit on the low end now as well. Um, I mean, when I started, I was building for just shy of 200 a square foot. And now it's, it's probably closer to three, realistically. I mean, you know how much the price of lumber has gone up and everything else so but to get a ballpark let's say you wanted to build a one bedroom 500 square foot adu you times that by times it by 250 on the low end maybe 350 on the high end if you wanted more customized finishes just to get yourself in a ballpark as to as to how how much it will cost i would say landscaping is extra and i'm going to give you some tips on that um, especially with this last year, people have really wanted outdoor space, right? And so you want to consider that for your tenant or whoever is occupying the ADU. They're going to want some space and maybe some private space. So if you can carve off some private backyard space for your ADU occupants, I think that's something important to consider. And some cities are easier to work with than others. Not naming names, but I might have a case study of one that you might not want to work in. We'll get to that. Uh, JDUs. So this is a brand new thing as of last year as well. It's a junior accessory dwelling unit. And they just became legal. Now, with an ADU, you can rent both main house and ADU. With JDU, you can literally have three houses on one lot, three separate living areas in one, on one property, your main house, your ADU, and your JDU. But if you do that, you have to live in one of the three if you do JDU, okay? So the difference with junior ADUs is you have to it, it already has to be existing space on the property. So for example, let's say you have a 2000 square foot house and you have a big master bed bath suite of 400 square feet at the back. Well, maybe you wanna just wall that off, put a separate entrance in the back of it, put a little kitchenette in there, and now that's your separate space. So it's, it's already gotta be existing space um, it can, in most cities, be an attached garage. So if your garage is attached to the main house, you could convert that garage into a junior ADU. Um, so something like that. But again, it can have a full kitchen. I mean, it has to be 500 square feet or less. So it's not going to be a big kitchen. But it, it's a separate living space that's legal. So... This is kind of amazing. You could really house hack if you wanted some extra income out of your property. Okay, so why build these things? Well, because maybe this rule isn't going to last forever and you want to do it while, it, while you can. Um, and I have a note here, do it appropriately. Okay, we don't want to just like lop on all these extra buildings 
and cram everything in. We don't want to be a cram lord. So think about how to make this appropriate on your property, right? We don't we don't want to be that that guy in the neighborhood who's just you know cramming everything in. But if it's appropriate to do so without a huge impact to the neighborhood, then you should do it. So I mean, I'm doing it. I'm living in one and renting out the other in one of them. And it's, I, I should have called this presentation, how cash flow from ADUs can save your butt during a pandemic, because that's really what helped me get through last year is the, the market was so uncertain. You, you all know, we didn't know what direction it was going to go. And suddenly it, you know, it ended up going up another 15% or whatever it did, but it could have easily gone the other way. So to have a little extra income coming in from these to help pay the mortgages was, was really helpful. Um, and in my opinion, these are affordable housing units. I mean, hasn't the government been crying about, oh, we need more housing. Well, this is a way to do it. And any of these ADUs I've rented, rent in a flash. I mean, think about it. They're brand new houses, first of all. So people want, you know, I mean, that's desirable in and of itself. But you have a, a one bed, one bath unit that maybe, you know, as an, a place in an apartment, yeah, sure, those will rent up. But these are either attached or detached one bed, one bath. So you get more money for those as a landlord, but they're still affordable because they're smaller units. So I, I really think, and I really believe that this is going to help us with the housing shortage that we have. All right, sorry for all the information. We're getting to pictures soon, don't worry. Um, funding. Everybody wants to know, how do you pay for these things? Well, uh, I, I paid cash with the intent to do a refinance. Okay, I'd be curious if there's any appraisers on the call today, if they want to chime in at the end um, about how the appraisal, appraisals are going on these properties. Because unfortunately, mine did not appraise, which was not such a big deal. It just meant I had to have a lot more cash in the, in the property, but not the end of the world at the end of the day, because what else are you doing with your money right now for an investment? I mean, where do you invest your money these days? you know, real estate is still a pretty safe place to do that. But if you're a homeowner, <clears throat> what I would suggest is you want to contact your existing lender. You might as well. They already have all your stuff. So see if, you know, start with them. If they can't do it or you don't like your existing lender, I'm sure one of your colleagues here can recommend somebody or I'd be happy to recommend somebody um, to use just to see what your options are. Maybe you get a, a line of credit or um, a couple of my friends have done the cash out uh, refinance. So they'll refinance, they get a lower interest rate and then they pull money out to build the ADU. And I'm gonna actually go through that because when you can see how fast the rent from these ADUs will pay off the money you borrow you're just gonna to wanna to do this on every property possible. So we'll get to that. Hard money, I put hard money in there, which I have some contacts for you as well, but <clears throat> just make sure you have plans to refinance. There's money everywhere to be had right now, but who wants an interest only higher rate loan on your rental property? If it's interest only, you're never going to get that loan paid off. You've got to pay down principal and interest, in my opinion. So have a way, if you're going to borrow the money to do it, have a way to refinance that so you've got principal and interest mortgage payment that you're, you're paying down part of that principal. All right, so let's get into the deal profiles. <clears throat> First one is in Lake Arrowhead, actually. Um, and I wanted to showcase this one because this was an already existing space. So I thought, okay, if you've got existing space that you wanna consider converting to ADU 
or JDU, I don't know if that's the right term, I call it JDU, but it's junior ADU, then think about that while we're going through this one. So this is a property um, fully hoarded. I just remember going to look at this, there's a lot of stairs and I was, I was literally walking on top of about a foot and a half of hoard and I was balancing myself with one hand leaning against the wall walking through and in the other hand I had a flashlight. There was no electricity on and I could hear rumbling in the back and I didn't know if it was squatters or rats running around or what so it was a bit overwhelming to get through this property and you really have to try to just tune out the stuff and see what you're looking at well anyway you don't have to worry about that but that's that was my experience with this property <clears throat> and the point being once i had it cleared out i discovered the secret door i'm like did i miss this um where does this go and it turns out it was a space above the garage so the point is if you have a, a rumpus room or maybe some space above a garage that you can put exterior stairs to, or even stairs maybe inside the garage um, leading up in, into, you can carve this off as a separate unit. So that's what I did. <clears throat> and, um, and as you can see, I mean, look at this great big space, you know. So this was already, like I said, permitted as usable space, but obviously I needed to get it permitted as, as an ADU. So <clears throat> the process with this is I, I had a guy come out and draw it out and measure it out. And then basically just, you know, put in the kitchenette, um, bathroom, bedroom, you know, we just kind of laid it out like this. Hopefully you can see that pretty, pretty clear on the screen and, and submitted that to the county of San Bernardino. And it's all done online, or at least it was uh, two years ago. And they just email you back and they say, yep, submit your fees for the permits. And, you know, away you go. So I ended up furnishing it. So this is my after pictures. Um, there's my kitchenette, um, my living room. You don't have to furnish your ADUs, of course. You can rent them unfurnished. But uh, being in Lake Arrowhead, this was actually a space I wanted to use. Another thing I want to mention is you can't Airbnb ADUs, right? Or I should say you can't short-term rent in most cities. The odd one will let you, but in most cities you can't. It has to be a 30-day minimum. But I went ahead and I decided to furnish it anyway and do a 30-day minimum. So that's what I do. I rent this 30 days at a time minimum. And then sometimes if I want to use it myself, I just have a gap in between tenants and I can go up there and use it. So there's a secret door. You can see it on the picture on the left. And that's, that's the way it came out. So, so here's the numbers on this property. <clears throat> First of all, you can't sell an ADU separately, right? It's still all one parcel. It's just one parcel. Now you have two houses on that one parcel. And I ended up actually leasing both houses to one tenant. So I'm happy just collecting my 2000 a month off this property. Um, she pays all the utilities and then she figures out a way to manage this property. So she'll actually do the month to month uh, rent rental for the ADU. And then she's got, you're allowed to actually short term rent up there. So she, that's what she does with the main house. And it's great for me because, like I said, I can still use this property. Um, and, um, it, and it's just the way we decided to set this one up. So this was one on the cheaper side. My cost to convert, <clears throat> only 2000 So I, I kind of, maybe I got lucky. But that was just to draw the floor plan and to pay for the permits. Um, I will mention you still have to have an, an inspector come out, inspect the work, make sure you did your plumbing electrical right. And then they sign off on the permit, you know, the, the, final, the final inspection card. 
and then you get what's called a certificate of occupancy in the mail. That's where they deem, yes, you can actually put a human in this building and it's legal. So you wanna make sure you get certificate of occupancy at the end, technically, before you put anybody in there. So I paid 100,000. <clears throat> It's currently worth 350. You might be asking yourself, well, why did the seller sell this for 100,000? And by the way, usually I, I'm working with realtors actually. So if you bring me a property, I will, I will tell you what my offer is, and then you write it up, and you submit the offer. That's the way it works. This one happened to come just through a friend of a friend. Um, so why would he take 100? Well, this is overwhelming to manage an extensive rehab like this. I mean, I, I think it was some, I don't know how many dumpsters it took just to get all this hoard out of there. And down all those stairs, it, it was over 22,000 I paid just to get all the trash out, rotting garbage and amongst other things. Um, the construction, now this was construction on both the main house and the ADU. Um, I should have thought to separate out the ADU, but that that was for the whole pro. I look at it as a whole project for investment purposes. And then of course I chose to furnish it. Well, I didn't have to do that, but uh, that's what I did. So the point is, is some sellers just don't want to do all this. And um, if you have an investor that you work with, as part of your team and they're good like I respect that relationship and hang on to them because they will be valuable to your business and if you don't I would love to be your your investor because you you can make it just so easy for these sellers to just give them the price they're looking for and literally they can walk away with their money in a week and they don't have to deal with all this and that's that's really beneficial to them um, I even got a thank you card and I thought this was important to show because if in your businesses, you ever get thank you cards, hang on to those. It, it reminds you of the value of your service. Sometimes people will say, oh, you know, you make too much a commission. Well, you know, you earn it. You earn that commission. And so save these thank you cards if you get those um, because you know you're really helping clients when you can get a handwritten note card like this all right on to the next one um does anybody even know where stanton is <laughs> do you know where garden grove is it's down by garden grove so this was a property as you can see i couldn't even see it uh, a lot of overgrown shrubbery. Um, that trash can on the left is actually where I signed the offer because there was nowhere to sit or stand inside the property. So this was actually a, a hoarded situation. Like you can imagine if you didn't clean your bathroom after a week, what it would look like. You know, you need to, you need to give a little wipe down after a week or so. Well, this guy hadn't cleaned in 30 years. So just imagine, just imagine that. So lots of overgrown shrubbery on the outside. I think I walked into several spider webs in, on this property when I looked at it. <clears throat> I went to my nephew who was eight and I said, Hudson, I wanna build an ADU. So he comes back with this design. I thought this would be cute to show you. <laughs> He's got bedroom. His living room might be a little narrow in this design, but I think he's got some future potential here. What do you think? Anyway, so this is the design I ended up with for real. I love this design. So if you can see this and sort of zoom in and um, make note of it, I'm really pleased with the way this one came out. <clears throat> it's 13 feet wide by 39 feet long. If I had to make one change, I'd make it a tiny bit longer. If I could have had room, I would have made it maybe 42, 44 feet long. That would have extended the living kitchen area 
a little longer so I could have a slightly bigger place for a kitchen table in there. <clears throat> the bedroom at the top there, at, on the north side, those are sliding patio doors. So remember that, I'm gonna show you how that, that ended up coming out because that's where I created my private backyard space. But you've got a, you've got a walk-in closet You've got that laundry, a stackable laundry off the hallway. You've got the bathroom off the hallway, you know, a normal size bathroom. And then a, a living kitchen area combo. It just, it, it's the flow of it and the feel of it is, is really nice. I really like this design. So stick build, here it goes. It's so weird when this comes together when you look at this picture, you think, how is a one bedroom, one bathroom going to fit in this? And I, I literally went and you stand in there and you try to figure it out. It's like, this is never going to fit. And then, you know, the walls start going up. You're like, okay, yep, I see how this, this is coming together. So, and here it is. Stucco box. That's all it is. You're, you're building a house. You're going to be so proud of yourself when you can do this because you're, you're building a house. You tie in all the utilities, by the way, to the main house, or you don't have to. And in hindsight, probably I would have looked into what it would have cost to separate the electrical and the water, because then you could charge those utilities separate to that tenant. If you don't care if it's for a family member, just tie it all in, it'll be cheaper. Um, but something to consider if you want to rent it separately and have separate bills, let's look into the city and see if you can have the utility separated. So here it is with my landscaping and blue door and the interior pictures. So I actually set this up. I have my instruments in here temporarily just for the photos. I wanted to put them in, but I don't have them in there at the moment, but I did live in here for a short time just to, because I just loved it. But anyway, I'm not in there anymore. So I took my instruments out, but I still have it furnished. I just, this is another one I just chose to furnish. Um, again, you can't rent these for less than 30 days. So I actually have it um, rented for 30 days minimum. And to just different people, the gal I have in there right now is a transplant from San Diego. She's she relocated Orange County. Um, she needed a place for a few months. She just gave her notice. Um, I threw it up again on Airbnb for 30 day minimum. I ended up getting a traveling nurse. You can also go to um, Furnish Finders, which is a website for traveling nurses, like nurses that come here from another state and need a place to stay for three months for their assignment. So that's the next guy I have coming. Okay, bathroom. This is the stackable laundry off the hallway. And then remember the patio doors I mentioned? Well, the setback at the time was 15 feet from the rear of the property. So at the time it was kind of annoying. I'm like, gosh, I wanna build it as big as I can all the way to the back, but it worked out nicely because now I have 15 feet of private yard space for this tenant right off the bedroom. And that's actually a persimmon tree. So it's a nice uh, fruit tree and shade tree back there. So that was existing, I didn't have to touch it. So that's that one. These are the costs, 22,000 for design and permits. Construction, that's gonna be a lot more now, just know that that's gone up. Um, landscaping, 5,000, you know, furnishings, appliances, all of that. Um, the value given to that ADU when I went to do the refinance, 30,000 only. Like what? I was hoping for at least dollar for dollar. So again, if there's an appraiser on here, I would love to know if that's changed. Um, maybe check with your, an appraiser friend if you know if, if a client is looking to do that. Um, but anyway, in the end it was okay because I just left more money into the property and um, 
it's it's better cash flow really. So uh, the rents twenty two hundred. Okay, so that includes utilities and the internet. I don't pay for cable, um, but that's 2200 $2, a month. One bed, one bath, 500 square feet in Stanton, North Orange County. So do some research on the area, on the area you wanna build in, see what you can get for rent. Is there a difference between furnished and unfurnished? Um, again, you don't have to furnish it. That was just something I chose to do. Now, something I'd like for you to calculate is if you paid cash for this, how many years would it take collecting rent, $2,200 a month, would it take you to pay it off? Put it in the chat box. So basically add up all those expenses, 22, 105, 5,000, 10,000, what do you get? And then divide it by $2,200 a month. That's how many months it's going to take you to pay this off. Somebody put it in the chat box. Because I think if you're with clients and you can actually do this math, you're going to be shocked and they're going to be shocked at how fast you can actually get this paid off. 64 months, I think that, yeah, that's about right. So 64 months divided by 12 months, five and a half years ish, right? So that's quick, you know, and then that, I mean, obviously your taxes are going to go up a little bit because you've, you've just improved your property and you're going to have a tiny bit more insurance on that property. But after the five and a half years, that's cash flow, more or less. And you've got a brand new property that shouldn't require a lot of maintenance going forward because you just did everything new to it. So that's pretty exciting to me. You can also, I highly recommend, if you don't already, install a financial calculator on your phone. Because let's say somebody had to get that financed maybe off a line of credit. You're going to want to calculate if they're paying a 5% interest rate on that money, how long is it going to take them to pay it off? We're assuming if they have all cash, right? So there's no, there's no interest rate attached to it. So, so use a financial calculator to, to calculate that as well. And in most cases, it's still only seven to eight years because the interest rates are so low right now. All right, last one, and then we'll get to some Q&A. So Bellflower, I had to pick, I would not go back to Bellflower. <laughs> this is the one with all the mistakes, but I didn't know that. So um, I'm going to show it to you anyway because it's good learning to um, keep these things in mind when you're talking to your own city, the city you wanna build in to see what fees they have and, and other things that come up. So this was the backyard. I wanted to show it to you prior to me cleaning it out so you could see that the weeds were actually as tall as the house was. So I probably walked through a few spider webs on this one too. So, but similar situation. It, it was a hoarding situation, overgrown shrubbery, um, just hard to get through this property. Here's some pictures, right? I'm not disclosing these addresses because I always wanna protect the seller, right? It's confidential, um, but this is, this is what it was. And this was actually pretty dangerous to walk through because those bottles were making things very slippery. Um, so I was, I was a little more cautious in this one paper and bottle hoarder. And this was inside spider webs everywhere. I, I've dealt with spiders, rats, fleas, cockroaches. Um, sorry if you're eating lunch, uh, a, a variety of, of insects. You have to be careful. Uh, so anyway, the outside we got it cleaned away. Great space for ADU. 
I will mention one thing now. If you're looking for property for your investor clients, try to consider property that have an alley access way in behind, right? Because in hindsight, I'm glad I did it for sure. And I have, I have great rents off this property now, but if you have an alley access, then that ADU tenant can come in off the alleyway and they don't have to walk across the, the property of the main house to get to their house. And you can create a parking space off the alleyway for them. So in hindsight, I would, I would look for that. And there's lots out there on the market. If you can get a corner lot, sometimes that's even better because you can create a parking space off the other street. Okay, so here's the design, two bed, two, uh, two bed one bath. <clears throat> this worked out pretty well. Um, I have since done another two bed, one bath and a slightly better design in my opinion, but this was the one I did for this property. <clears throat> I've learned to tweak things a little bit. For example, in the bedrooms, <clears throat> There's two, there's two windows that weren't really necessary. And I thought, you know what? I wanna be able to have a headboard for my bed instead of a window being in the way. So I took those windows out in, in this property. I caught that before I put those in because you've already got two great big windows off the side. So I thought I'm gonna have that one wall solid. So little things like that, I've sort of learned along the way. Um, but overall, it's still a decent layout. So again, um, stick built. Well, Bellflower is in liquefaction. Does anybody know what that means? <clears throat> it's like liquefaction is some sort of thing where you have to test to see if your house is sitting on some sort of water table. And this actually shows up on the NHD report. It's a little box, I believe. Um, that's checked or not. You probably never paid attention to it. I never did until now, and now I know what it means. And in order, if it's on liquefaction and the city requires it, they bring in this machine and this thing goes completely vertical and it goes 50 feet down, five zero. And they poke a little thing and take some soil out or something and determine what you need to do. Well, <clears throat> This is what I needed to do. <clears throat> you have to dig all the way to the lot line and then compact the dirt because they wanna make sure the dirt is stable in case there's a whatever, earthquake or settling or whatever. So, and of course there's no room to put the dirt. So you have to dig it from one side and pile it on the other side and then put it back one foot at a time hire a third party engineer to come over with a little pokey thing, poke it, make sure you compacted it enough. And then when you get all that done, then you have to do the same thing on the other side. So not to say I would never buy another property in liquefaction, but I would make sure I have the extra money budgeted for that. So I was also doing this, I think this was the beginning of 2019 when all the rains came. Okay, so this was right in the middle. Of course, it filled up with rain. So now I've got this Grand Canyon filled with <laughs> turned swimming pool. So anyway, this looks a little scary, but I got through it somehow. Well, then you need more dirt because you're compacting the dirt. And then the porta potty guy comes and delivers your porta potty and puts it right on your front lawn. And then the gravel guy dumps the gravel right in front of your garage. So you can't get in. So you just have to manage these things. It's just, these are, I don't want it to scare you in any way, but just know you kind of, this is some of the stuff you have to deal with. So anyway, finally we get the footings put in and the walls up. And, and this is something also you can talk to your um, contractor about. You can do either slab or raised. I don't know if I have a preference, I've done both. Um, slab seems to go faster, I believe, with the inspections. 
And again, you can see if there's any cost benefit to designing one on a slab based or on a raised foundation. Um, little things happen along the way. For some reason, the measurements were wrong. This was my stackable laundry in the hallway. Turns out it wasn't deep enough. Well, luckily I caught it when I was there looking at it. And, you know, we were able to fix it and just bring the walls out a little bit, a little bit more so that you could put a bifold door on that laundry. So turns out City of Bellflower requires you to do street improvements if you spend more than $25,000 on improving your house. So much for whatever your taxes cover. So I had to pay to put a sidewalk in and that's a separate license. And I'm doing this in City of LA too. They're making me put three street lights. Well, I don't even know what a street light costs. Years ago, it was four or five thousand. Who knows what it is today? So, three of them I need. So, just because I'm improving my property, uh, this, this is what some of the cities so ask that these are questions to ask the city. And <clears throat> some of these, uh, I actually didn't know, and the city forgot to charge me. So, halfway through my construction, they mailed me some bills to the tune of. $12,000. They forgot to collect the park parkland fee and the public facilities fee. So I had to go back and pay that before they'd sign off on the final permits. So just make sure you're talking to a knowledgeable person in the city who knows what the ADU, and mind you, this is right when ADUs came out. So I, I must have been the first one in the city. Now these cities know what they are and they should know what their fees are. So just either you or your architect, make sure you get the list of what the fees are. Very important at the beginning. So you make sure you have enough money to pay for all this if you decide to go forward with it. My construction, 135,000, it would be more now for sure. And of course my appraisal did not come in. So, you know, I was expecting to get some of that money back out. So um, just have a game plan for that as well. If you're going to spend the cash and you really are counting on getting that cash back out, um, then um, work with a lender in advance so that you can try to plan for that. The good news is I'm making $5,600 a month. So I do have a mortgage on this one. It's more than covering the mortgage. <clears throat> the front house is a 3-2. The ADU is a 2-1. Um, and I've got it rented to, to one person. So he, you know, he's got fa extended family members in, in the ADU. So that's that's that property. Um, just know your expenses. Uh, I don't want this to scare you in any way. Just, just know what you're getting into. And a lot of that can be done initially through research um, through the city. Okay, so I'll just wrap up and then we'll get to the questions. I'm actually doing my first JDU. It's an attached garage. Obviously I have to live in one of them, right? So I'm actually considering turning this garage into a music studio. So I'm actually gonna um, put extra insulation and do some soundproofing to it. So I can actually have all those instruments you saw, plus my drum set and some other stuff in this. So that's gonna be kind of a cool space for me. But if I choose not to do that, I can rent this for 1500 a month. So next steps for you is just, first of all, figure out is it appropriate to do one, like we talked about. Um, go to the city web, usually you can find all, the, all this information from the city and if it's not on their website, you can email the planner. And then just, you know, figure out your fees and then hire a designer. It doesn't even have to be an architect, although I like using an architect um, it's important to pick somebody who's responsive, who's done a few of these, who might have some good ideas for design, um, and who knows a thing or two about the city you're in. And I'm actually offering uh, a free consultation. I don't make any money. I don't want any payment for any of this. I just want you to think about me. If you have a hoarder house, you can bring it to me. I can go and see it with you. You could write the offer for me. We try to buy some houses together that way, but 
as far as ADUs, I, I don't make any money to do this. I'm just happy to try to help you if you can learn from some of my mistakes and if I can give you some good ideas on how to get started. So just emailing me your property address. We'll just spend a few minutes on the phone kind of brainstorming some things and, and you can go from there. This picture is actually an ADU I attached to a garage. I wanted to keep this particular garage a garage, right? Because sometimes that's valuable. Um, so I put the ADU on, on the back of it attached. So that's, that's a picture there. And then just to wrap up my contact info. And this is the property in Los Angeles. I'm splitting the lot. So it actually already has two houses on it, which as you can see by the looks of the roof, they, they need some work. Um, so I will renovate them as soon as I get permits, but I, I'm splitting that lot into two. So I'll be able to build an ADU on each property and also neither of them have garages. So I'll build an ADU on each property and a garage on each property. You can see my little Volkswagen bus on the left there. So that's it. Should we jump to Q&A? Do you want to do you want to read them out in any order, Pauline, or do you want me to, to look at the chat box? I, I, I will handle it. OK. OK, so I've got a question from Frankie Ho. Is two story allowed, uh, you know, ADU, that's what Frankie meant, uh, so he can save the lot size because most of us don't have lot size that big. Yes, two stories are allowed. Um, it gets a little trickier. Like, let's say you're going to build above the garage. Well, if your garage is sitting on the lot line, then the setbacks these days are something like four feet. So your garage might have, your, your ADU above the garage might have to be in a bit. There's some rule to do with that. And then of course, you're gonna have more in construction costs to support it properly with the structural component. Um, but yes, you should be able to, there's some exceptions if you're in historical areas, maybe they don't allow it. Um, but in most, and keep in mind liquefaction. So if you are in liquefaction or an earthquake fault zone, then there's going to be a, maybe an extra cost there to do some extra support construction wise and engineering wise, right? You have to bring an engineer as part of the planning, the design portion so that they can get all the, the extra bits involved. But yes, you can go like above garage, you go above a house, uh, you can put a second story. Well, I mean, you could do an addition on your house and, and go and go up. So, yeah. Okay. The second question is from Nanette, and she asks, "You encountered that in Bellflower?" Oh, you're free. You froze a little bit there. What was the question again? Uh, the question is, uh, you spent some money on the liquid fraction for the Bellflower house. How much more money, if you remember, that you have to spend to finish that project? Oh, yeah, we, we could go back to that slide. Basically, what your extra costs are is all that grading. So it's the, like I had to hire a guy with a backhoe to basically dig all that out. It was about 8,500. Then you have to hire a third party engineer to come with his pokey stick to make sure you compacted it right. That was a few hundred or something, um, more dirt. So that had to be delivered and brought in. Um, so I would say, you know, it, it's hard It's hard to tell case by case. If you're in Bellflower, I can definitely talk to you and add up all those costs. I'm doing one in liquefaction in Los Angeles and they only require you dig down two feet. Bellflower required you dig down five feet. So presumably, maybe it'll be a little cheaper. There's not as much dirt to move and dirt to dig. So contact me, depending on if you are in liquefaction, I'll, I'll help you try to gauge that, what that cost will be. Okay. So, yeah, call me, take my phone number and email down from the screen. Frankie has another question. He said, can ADU be bigger than the original house? 
it used to be that you can only build it up to 50% of the main house, but now it can be up to 1200. Um, I check with your specific city. Do you, do you know the answer to that actually, or? I, I, I do, I do. Jump uh, in. ADU cannot be bigger than the main house and ADU, you're right. Uh, it's supposed to be no bigger than 1200. Uh, and it, sits, it has to sit at the back of the main house. So it's somewhat invisible from the street. So if that would answer your question. Thank yeah, you. that's, that's a good point too. Um, anything I've built, it has to be tucked in behind. It can't just be, you know, like some attachment right on the front of your house. So, yeah, you have to have space at the rear of the property. Yeah, and, and then I think they waive the requirement on the garage because I build ADUs too. So uh, some of those requirements are a little bit more relaxed. Uh, as long as you have parking space or within transportation means, uh, you don't have to replace your garage because in the past, I used to rebuild a garage for them. Somewhere yeah. on the lot. It's funny because back in the day when I was buying REOs, city of Long Beach had a garage inspection. Right? <laughs> so, so the city required it, you have to have inspection and they'd come out and they say, oh, there's plumbing in here. You got to rip all that out. Well, nowadays you can put it all right back in and yep. use it as legal livable space. So who would, who knew? All right. A uh, question from my stone. How many feet an ADU needs to be away from the fence or the line with neighbors? So I think he is referring to the setbacks. Um, you can probably answer this better. I think in most cities it's four feet now. It used to be five. And then and when I remember, like it was 15 for that for that one in Stanton. But yeah. city of LA is definitely four feet now. So it's only four feet. Yeah. So they, they have relaxed the requirement a little bit, as you mentioned. So yeah, now I'm what I, what I do initially is I do a survey of the land and it's money well spent just for the audience sake. Uh, so you know exactly where your borderline is. So you put those uh, tokens at different parts of the house so you know exactly where it is. And that's how I lay out my foundation because I do it from stick build and I try to do it within the boundary. So I don't want an inspector to come out missily. You know, what is the basis for this line? You know, is it at the borderline, a lot line or whatever? So that's what I want to go by. That's a great point, actually, because ultimately, I've always gotten a survey. And I don't know what it costs. I'd have to go back and look that up. But it's not it, that expensive, Chris. It's, it's not that expensive. It's worth worth spending anything from 1000 to 1500 Yeah. And, you, and they'll actually mark off, you know, it's one thing to look at the, um, you know, whatever you can pull off the freebie sites. But you know, you really need to know exactly where things are because keep in mind, especially with LA, the way they carved off those property lot lines, sometimes your neighbor's house could be four feet over onto your property. So why not spend that money up front and just know exactly where, where the lot lines are? Exactly. I, just to pick you back off, you don't want to have a dispute with your neighbors when you start cutting out, you know, I do a lot of trenching too. So when you start digging and all of a sudden you say, the neighbor said, well, you're too close to my property line or whatever. So you do want to get a curve. I got another question from Gary Penn. What is fire springers requirement for the ADU? Sorry, what is the five? Fire sprinklers, fire suppression system. Um, I got to think about this for a minute. Do you, do you have the answer? I, uh, at this time, uh, the rules are a little bit more relaxed. And if you want to do a retrofit, uh, it would be, how should I say, it would cost the owner quite a bit of money. So far, of all the city's permits I pulled, they did not ask me to say, put in a fire sprinkler system or they request a joint. Whereas on new houses I built, uh, of course, you know, now by law, you, you need fire sprinklers and you also need, in California, we also need a solar system. So there's additional. Uh, expenses for the homeowner to bear. But for ADU, uh, we, we don't have fire sprinkler requirement. Yeah, I mean, I just literally finished one. Years ago, I built a second home before ADUs were around. Um, I was remodeling a second home, I think. And actually they were requiring fire sprinklers or if you're doing like a new garage, sometimes they, and but this was in a historical district. So I'm trying to remember if it had to do with that. 
Um, so sometimes if it's far enough set back off the street, you might have to do fire sprinklers. And that's because the firefighter's hose has to reach a certain distance. It's something to do with that. But yeah. I just did one in LA and it was quite quite a ways back, but I we didn't put fire sprinklers in. So it, it may be case by case. But yes, yeah, solar panels, those are those are required nowadays. Uh, just to pick you back off, uh, on fire trucks, since I deal with this quite a bit, as long as the fire truck can get into your ADU area uh, to sprinkle waters in case of a fire, it's okay. And the maximum length of the hose has, cannot exceed 150 feet. So these are, these are some of the technical stuff that you get into when you build houses. But anyway, uh, for ADU, if, if you, to be honest, for some of you who wants to do this stuff, Find a licensed contractor, okay? Don't, don't try to guess everything by your own because you would take out a lot of questions. Uh, next question uh, from uh, Frederick. And Frederick's comment was, which I thought would be good to share with everybody is that how come the appraisal value is less than what you spend? How do you deal with that? <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I'm hoping an appraiser can jump on here and, and answer that because to me, it didn't make any sense. They were, they were literally looking for single family residents plus ADU. I'm like, you're not going to find that. I'm the first one building it in these cities. And they're like, well, that's what we need to see. They would not take into consideration two on a lot. It had to be the same zoning and it had to be single family and ADU. I'm like, well, you're not going to find that. Now, I wondered if I had attached those ADUs if by being attached, they would have included that square feet with the main house and taken that into consideration and if it could have been appraised for hire. Um, but that's not what I did and it was too late anyway, I'd already built them. So, so that's one of, these are the things that you can ask a lender. Like let's say you wanna get it, a cash out refi at the end or, or a, a refinance at the end to get your, your money back out. Um, what are those things that they're going to look for? Is it better to attach it? Because then, you know, maybe you leave a doorway open so that they actually count that as, you know, at least a square footage they counted. Uh, so, Chrissy, just to share, share my experience with some of the AD I built, usually the owner do a cash out refinancing on the existing home. So they get some cash out of the existing property and then they say, Mr. Lee, here's 100000 that I can cash out, build the ADU for me. That's how I work with that. That's better. That's better. If you can do that, or like I've got one girlfriend who, who got a line of credit. And ultimately, I think what she ended up doing at the end is she used the line of credit to build the ADU, but then she did a refinance of, you know, first loan and line of credit anyway, because the interest rates are so low right now. So it's, it's case by case that way. But yeah. Try to sort how you're going to have the money up front. Okay, uh, Simon has a question. Are you new uh, on building new ADUs? And if it's a detached one, does it trigger reassessment on the main home? Yeah, in my experience, I've my taxes have gone up. And I believe they use the value that you submit like when you go to the city, you fill out the permits, you say, okay, this is going to cost seven, you know, maybe make it a little bit lower, right? 75,000 instead, maybe it costs you. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be too far off, but I think they use that number to submit to, for the reassessment. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll add to what you said. And as I said, I finished several ADUs and uh, what happened is usually at the end, that's a, a long process for the audience. At the end, the city will send me a piece of paper, actually send to the owner and say, how much does it cost to build the ADU in 2021? And so what I did is, you know, usually the client call me back and say, Mr. Lee, how much did you spend? So I did exactly what you did. I uh, lowered the cost a little bit and then submit the figures. And then that's how they got reassessed. Don't think that when you build an ADU, it won't trigger reassessment. Uh, one thing I, I told the owner is that, your house is going to worth more money and now you've got a legal structure and it's licensed everything is on record 
you know, now you can set instead of selling a three hundred dollar per square feet, you're selling a three twenty, three thirty. So it actually increases the value of your home because now you have an additional structure at the back that you can rent out. So don't worry about that tax. Uh, it'll pay you back more than you can imagine. Okay, and the other I question, can, go if ahead. If I can add to that, don't build an ADU without permits. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that. I know somebody who did this. I'm like, why would you do this? And, and they got busted, of course, because the neighbor called and they're like, there's just too many people. You know, neighbors are weird sometimes. They just, they wanna call and instead of minding their own business. Well, you know, one party or one whatever happens and they decide to call the city. So now yeah. they have to go through the process of trying to permit this. Now, hopefully it won't be too difficult for them, but why didn't they just do it to begin with? Just permit it. Christy, just to pick you back on, on what you said, I have saved a lot of homeowners for that because they say, oh, we got ourselves into trouble. Let's find Mr. Lee to see if he can go back and retroactively apply a permit for us. So that's what kept me busy. Next question. Uh, I can answer this one really quick. Uh, still from Simon, do we require the install solar panel on new ADU? The answer is no. Okay, let's go on to the next question. We are running a little tight on time. DL. If the main house needs rebuilt anyway, can the owner submit the new plan for the main house and the ADU to the planning department at the same time or your strategic suggestion? Um, if you're building a main house right from scratch? No, he, he say the main house probably need remodeling or rebuilt. So should they submit the new plan on the main house with the ADU at the same time? You can, and it just depends on I would say your permits to renovate the main house will be quicker if you just submit four permits to renovate the main house and then do the ADU after the fact. But you might just want to do everything both at once if you're not in a rush. I think that's more time efficient and cost efficient. So I agree. I agree. I, I have encountered a situation like that, and that's exactly why I advise a client. Okay, yeah. next question from the net. Is there an expiration on the survey done? Such as if there was one done a while ago, can it be used needed, uh, if needed in the future when building anything? Meaning that when you've done the survey, uh, once you've done the survey, let me, let me answer because we got a lot of uh, questions. Then that you do it once, then that's it. That record will stay with you. The land is not gonna change. The survey will stay for a long, long time. Okay, uh, Andy. How do you negotiate with a hoarder? Oh, this is what I'm interested in too. Since most are possessive with this stuff, let alone selling the property somewhat, I want to ask that question too. So how do you deal with these hoarders? First of all, there's no negotiating with hoarders. <laughs> no hoarder ever wants to sell ever. <laughs> they need to sell. There's no negotiating. By the time I get the phone call, they, they, well, half of the time they've died, right? <laughs> and I'm dealing with the heirs. And it's very emotional for the heirs. It's very emotional. They go through every feeling imaginable. They are sad. They feel guilty they weren't around to do more to help. They get angry because they got stuck with this mess. They, they, there's, there's, there's shame, there's everything. So that's half of them. The other half, maybe that person has fallen. This has been a lot of the cases that glass and paper hoarder one, she fell and went into the hospital and they brought her back. They're like, we can't bring you back in here. This is not livable. So she had to go into an assisted living home. At that point, she needs to sell. A lot of them get red tagged. When a property gets red tagged, you can't live in it. So it, it goes to the extreme where something needs to be done to do something with that property. And that's where that's where I come in to try to find a win-win situation. Okay. Uh, to answer Song's question, can you repeat how appraiser assess the value with the ADU? Uh, what I did, as I mentioned, is that uh, county assessor, once everything is all completed, I submit all the necessary form. It's a lot of paperwork, actually. Then they asked me how much you spend on the bathroom, 
on the kitchen and, and all this stuff. So that's a lot of data that the contractor who build that AD would have to submit. And that's the figures I go by. And I submit it back to the county assessor office and then they use some computer model to reevaluate uh, how, how much the house would be appraised at or what is the property tax rule should be. So hopefully that will answer your questions. Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? Otherwise, I have a couple of my own questions for Christy. Oh, uh, Song said that referring to appraiser to refinance and cash out. As I said, uh, normally they don't, uh, they don't finance ADU constructions. Okay, Christy, can I ask you a couple of questions? Uh, this is more like a personal question. I want to do what you're doing too. Where do you find the capitals to, to go, go around and doing all this AD acquisitions or doing all this house acquisitions because uh, as you see sometimes the money you put in uh, you're collecting rent I know that's okay and maybe it pays mortgage but on some other instance you might not have sufficient funds to deal with the negative cash flow do you have a group of investors or how do you find the resources financial resources uh, to fund this operation well, I've been lucky because the, the house flipping business has been good. And I would say, however you make your money, whether it be real estate commissions, you know, doing loans, uh, being a doctor or a dentist, it doesn't matter. Like save some of that money. That's all I did. I saved up some of that money. I put it in a bank account and that's what I used to start building these ADUs. Um, I do have private lenders also. So I would like all those houses that you saw in my deal profiles, I intended to flip and I only decided to keep them when I realized oh, I could build ADUs. So I already had bought them with the intention to flip and I had bought those with private money. How do I get private money? I've never asked for money. People just come to me with money. I, I don't know. I guess I, I am lucky that way, but people know I'm in this business and I pay anywhere from six to 12% and they get a deed of trust against that property for security. Oh. And just like, you could say it's like a hard money loan, but it's, okay. it's people. Like I met one guy on a hiking trail, you know, who has extra money to invest and he doesn't know what to do with it. Um, I have a bunch of musician friends that uh. are successful musicians. They have money. They don't know how to invest it. That's not their forte. So those people is who I end up working with. I said, okay, well, you, you can loan it against this property. I'll fix it up. <clears throat> you take a deed of trust. So it protects your, your investment. And then when I resell the property, you get your principal back with some interest. So that's how, that's how I did it. And I did it all through word of mouth. And right now, even for your businesses, if you're thinking about, well, you want to do this, or even if you want to get more leads for listings, for example, Social media is, is huge right now. I mean, look at what we're doing right now. We're still on Zoom. Nobody's meeting in person yet. Um, by posting certain things on social media, no matter what business you're in, make it interesting. People will know you're still in business. And I have people that contact me after years. They're like, oh, do you still buy hoarder houses? Oh, no, they say, I see you still buy hoarder houses. It's only because I've posted maybe the odd picture here and there. They know I'm still in business. Okay. And I have the same thing with lenders. They'll email me and just say, I have some money to lend. You know, do, do you have a use for it right now? <clears throat> so you've got all these contacts in your own networks. You just don't know it yet. Okay. So I don't have any more questions. Does the audience have any more questions? Otherwise, uh, I'll pass it back to Pauline. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you for uh, Christy and Mr. Lee for this wonderful section. It's amazing. And we through the Zoom and we get connected right well and we get so valuable information and experience from Christy. Christy living in which city? Christy? Los Angeles. Los Angeles, so close to us, okay? We want to thank you for your expertise and your valuable sharing uh, for your uh, experience to all our fellow realtors. And this uh, section is recording. And so you will get a lot of people to 
view this video and they might call you for more questions. If you have any further questions regarding build the ADUs and make more money for yourself and your investors, please contact Christy directly, magician Christy. <laughs> okay, we hope to see you uh, in person soon and listening you play your guitar and sing a happy song together with you. I love ADU, I still remember <laughs> the few song. Okay, on behalf of Western Gabriel Valley Realtors, we would like to thank again, Miss Christy Sitwell for your informative and valuable presentation today. We thank you again. And a quick reminder for next Monday, Tuesday, you have a two days free class, Green Destination Class by NAR. Don't miss out, this is a member's benefit. And if you are not member, you still can enter clicking wsgvar.com, choose the education education class to enroll. And for the next, uh, next August 24th, our Saver at Home and Learn Tuesday, 11 o'clock, we have a very good topic, centralized all in one property purchasing platform by our affiliate, Amy Guan. Amy, Amy will share with you their uh, program for this good one. Also use the uh, social media to promote your property and uh, your information to enlarge your business opportunity. Thank you again, Christy, Mr. Lee, Fang, and all of you joining today's class. Stay safe and happy and healthy. We see you next Monday and August 24th, Tuesday at 11.